welcome to Elevate Second Year Anniversary. I'm very excited to be here joined by a live audience in my house in New Jersey. And today we have a special guest, a guest of honor who has been Elevate's um, Chief Operating Officer for the past two years without her help, her support, her motivation. You know, Elevate wouldn't be what it is today. So. Thank you for everyone that is joining us today, as well as to Joanna for being a speaker of the night. Uh, just a few stats in regards of how much impact we have been able to have through Elevings um, two years. We have graduated more than 65 um, cohort participants that included a summer internship as well as a winter internship and I continue to work very closely with one of our winter internships uh, individuals who has now achieved a, a secondary job but we continue to stay in contact so the ecosystem has grown bigger and bigger and stronger due to every one of you who has participated and who has made additional efforts to continue to keep the networking and the relationships um, stronger. So we thank you for your partnership and also for your referrals. Um, over 300 people have been impacted through the different summits, the um, volunteer activities that we have conducted and all of that in two years. So we're starting uh, our third year practically tomorrow. So looking to grow stronger and to be able to capture new areas and continue to elevate and motivate um, you know, the cohort participants for, um, to help them achieve their dreams. So Joanna, welcome. Yes, Thank yes. you so much for, um, joining us today. I'm going to be looking up some of the questions that you sure. have, but first, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? This uh, recording, it's available through Spotify and, and other means. So why don't you tell us about you, Joanna, the person and some of the obstacles or one of the obstacles that you needed to overcome through your life experience. Yeah, super. So um, before I jump into that, I would say long question because I can answer it many ways. Um, I would like to thank everyone who's here live. I really, really uh, appreciate all your support from day one. Elevink wouldn't be what it is and what it's going to be without all your support being there in day one, believing in Claudia and I and entering this platform, this program. And what it's emotional for me, Claudia, and I, and I, I love you so much, <laughs> um, is people believed in us. People believed in that in that idea like, yes, you know what, I, I want to join this program. I believe that I need this for growth. I need this to develop. I need this to uh, connect to a network at the time when they joined us. So being here two years later and seeing familiar faces for the first time, it, it's very emotional and, and, and humbling uh, for me. But uh, thank you for this opportunity to share my story uh, at Elevink in, in a very important uh, day, two, two, year, two year anniversary day um, that will be remembered. So thank you so much, thank you all. So I'll start with, with my story and, and things that I had to overcome to be where I am today. And I think it started with my childhood. You know, when I was a child, I had a lot of, of confidence issues. I was one of the girls that stood quiet in the room. Um, I was one of the girls who, uh, you know, was kind of not paid too much acknowledgement, too much attention. So all throughout my, you know, older years, even as I got to adulthood, I had to overcome confidence. I had to learn how to believe in myself and bring my authentic self forward. Not be fake, not try to fit in the room because that's what the room looked like. Not try to connect people and be someone I wasn't. So for me, that was a major obstacle that just to the last three, three to four years, I really found myself. Not through just my education, but also expanding my network, connecting with the right people. I started finding the real true Joanna, finally. And I would say when you find that real person, you're able to overcome any obstacle that's gonna come to you. 
And throughout my, my time, I overcame, you know, childhood challenges, being born and raised in a poor community, um, not having the resources uh, that I needed, ESL being my first language, um, being most of the time in remedial English courses because I did not write well. Uh, so those were some of my childhood challenges. Of course, as I started getting into my corporate career, I had different challenges. Some of my challenges was being different. The only one in the room that looked like me. Being the only one that would show up to certain meetings in corporate America. So like I going back to the original question is having that confidence in myself, believing in myself, not leaving that the real Joanna at the door, but bringing the Joanna, the real authentic Joanna to every place I go. And I'm happy that you've helped me. You've been a, a tremendous mentor to me these last two years to really help me um, be where I am today. Thank you, Claudia. No, thank you. So today's topic is pursuing a higher education and aligning with your passion. That's the topic or the theme for today. So along those lines, tell us at what moment did you realize your potential and your desire to pursue a doctorate degree? So, I think it was never about the question, did I have the potential? Because we all have potential in us that's untapped. The right question is that, did I have the guts in me to pursue that higher level education? And I'll never forget um, how I, I made that decision. That this, I remember when I was a young, a young girl in second grade, they were going around the room and they were asking uh, the students, hey, what would you like to be when you grow up? And I did not know, this was like, you're talking about 30 something years ago. I didn't have exposure. I didn't have exposure to careers. I didn't know, I didn't have any role models. And just what came out of my mouth is the first thing that I thought of. And I said, a doctor. Now, did I know which doctor I wanted to be? Did I know? No. The only thing I remember was that time where the teacher looked at me and said, are you really sure you can be a doctor uh, coming from this area? That wasn't a good response. Mm -hmm. So I put that aside and I put, I tell you the story because sometimes what other people tell us affect us in our decisions as we get older. So I kept the doctor, the doctor mind, the doctor decision to the side. I hid it because I was hurt at that moment. And I won't forget back in 2017, I, I was on the other side of my kitchen counter and my husband was on the other side. And I said, you know, Ruben, I know there's more in me. I know there's more potential in me. I just need to connect to it. I need to take the steps necessary to connect to that potential. And out of nowhere, Claudia, he opens his phone, finds Liberty University and said, Joanna, I think you should go back to school and get your doctorate. I was stunned. I thought he was going to come up with something else, but he had heard my story a long time because I've been with my husband 25 years. My husband knows me. Really well. <laughs> really well. <laughs> he knows yes. my pains, my struggles. He knows me very well. Good days and bad days. Good days. It's not just good days. He knows when Joanna has her bad days. He knows. He, I, I can't lie to my husband. I can never hide anything because forget it. He can't. He'll catch me. Um, so he comes out and, and shows me that. And I said, are you, do you really think I can go back to school and get my doctorate? I have two, two kids that are special needs. I'm married. I made up every excuse that you can make up. And that's what we do with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We sometimes, we have it all in us, but we, we make all these excuses that by the time we get to the last excuse, we talk ourselves out of it. And that's what I was trying to do in front of him. And he said, no, 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 you're going to go read this. 
you're gonna do your research, you're gonna look into it, and I want you to come back and tell me why you can't do it. That was a tough question when he told me, come back to me. I was like, I left that kitchen counter and I went and did my research. It was on a Saturday morning. I did my research. Eventually I spoke to him um, by Monday. And I told him, I think I'm going back to school. I'm gonna get my doctorate. I'm gonna go pursue my doctorate. And I know I have this in me and I'm not gonna allow anyone's words or anything stop me along the way. But I do need your support. Of course. I told him, I need your support because this is a huge undertaking. We, we all need the support, right? I'm we sure. all need our support system. And he did. He said, look, I got you. Joanna, don't worry. I will step in where needed. And that was a pivotal moment for not just me making the decision on going back to school, but me dealing with something that was hidden in me, which was what the teacher in second grade had told me. That was still there. It was still rooted in me and it was still holding me back from moving forward. So I thank my husband to this day. That was a pivotal moment because one, I had to deal with my past. I had to deal with being honest with myself. I had to one, address him and answer him honestly, be the authentic Joanna, not, oh, shrub it off. Stop making all these excuses. So that was a pivotal moment that closed the door to my past and brought me to going into my doctorate. Tell you the truth, I did not know what was going to come after I made that decision. <laughs> and I can tell anybody you really don't know because it's your personal journey. But I thank my husband to this day for really, um, you know, starting me and, and pushing me and poking me to, 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 to move forward and do it. Yeah. That saying of like behind every great man, there's a wonderful woman or something mm -hmm. like that. Right? I think it goes the same way for us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as we're live, you can see my husband walking around, mm -hmm. helping out with every aspect of, of the event, making sure that everyone is taken care of. And I think that's exactly what it means, right? When we yeah. find that teammate that understands mm -hmm. us, that supports us, that mm -hmm. encourages, that pushes us, mm -hmm. that stretches us, I think that, um, you know, we, we have it in us, but sometimes we need that other person to yes. also help us understand how much we have it in us. Yes. So how did you decide what um, what was going to be the area of focus of your doctorate? Walk us mm -hmm. through that. I mean, obviously, you know, there's the doctorate degree, but then you have to hone in mm -hmm. into a very specific topic. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So the first decision an individual will make is, is I'm going to pursue a doctorate and you decide what school you're going to be up to. It could be under the education school, it could be under the business school. So there's different schools of doctorate. So I already had made the decision that I wanted to pursue a doctorate in business because that's always been, I, I've had an undergraduate, I've had my master's, and then I said, you know what, I'm not gonna go you know, and get this other one. Let me stay within the path of business, but dig deeper because that's what the doctorate does. It's a, it's a layer within a layer. And the first two years, it was your your organizational I, I focused on strategic management because i believe in order to get to high levels even in, in a nonprofit, in corporate in, in in government you have to learn how to develop strategies so i said you know what let me pursue something that could go in any direction so strategic managers so i took hr courses i took organizational leadership i took supply chain management i took a lot of array courses if i were to ever run my own company or be at executive level i have that experience so then came the decision of what i really wanted to do my dissertation on and that was as a student you have to do several proposals so I said, you know what, I'm just going to go with one proposal that I believe a lot in it. And I decided to go with corporate social responsibility. And why did I do that? Because I felt from the stuff that I researched and from the stuff I experienced, corporate social responsibility is important for organizations to embrace, especially in a time of now. Did I know that COVID was coming? No, I didn't know COVID was coming when I was making these decisions and I was proposing to the research chair that I would go. But I said, every organization should think about not just bottom line revenue, 
But how is this impacting the employees, the customers, the supply chain, my local community, my government? And that's a change of mindset from corporate America and capitalism. So when I decided to go after that, I had to present it. And they were, you know, of course they asked me a ton of questions of why, why did I believe it? I had to justify that it's a topic that's still open. Because as I started doing the research on the topic, the topic's been around for 50 plus years. But in the United States of America, we're so behind on corporate social responsibility. Other countries are so farther ahead. So when I decided to study, I said, one, I'm going to get the most out of this topic because one, it's relevant in the time we're in. A lot of companies, customers want to purchase from companies that have a duty in their community or active in their community. So it was a topic that was well-rounded and was lined up with my values. It lined up with my values. I believe that companies should be giving back to the employees. I believe companies should be you know, supporting their supply chain. I believe companies should be investing in their communities for the future generation. So it was a topic that was aligned with my passion. It wasn't just, let me do this topic, let me get it over with. While I was writing it and, 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 and doing all that research, I got really, really into it because it was lined up with what I believe. So any questions from the audience? I love it. No questions, just love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so final thoughts, if somebody is thinking out of the audience that is listening, if somebody's thinking about pursuing a doctorate or a higher education, what would you say to them? So if they're, if they're pursuing, I, I look at that question as several pieces, not just a doctorate. And I want to talk to different audiences because I don't know who's going to be on the other side. They may be like, Hey, I want to go for my GED mm -hmm. or Hey, you know what? I'm at a point in my career where I want to um, go to a technical school and get a license or I want to, you know, get a certification or go get my master's. So I want to talk to all those different audiences. I say the first step is not just preparing yourself and getting all the information, but is making that decision. You have to in yourself. You can't allow someone to say you should go back to school. No you have as an individual have to make that decision and say i'm going to commit to moving forward and getting more education because this is not just the, it's going to be a piece of paper or a diploma i'm going to hang up it's something that it's ingrained in you you will get exposure to rooms that you've never been in you will get exposure to people that you've never connected with you're going to stretch yourself so i would my first advice is make a commitment to yourself make that decision. Second is if you put any education, I, I hear my husband always in the background telling me, what's in it for you? <laughs> what are you going to get out of it? Did you do all your research? And did you answer every question you can answer? If someone asked you, why are you going for that technical school? Why are you going to go back and get your master's? Is it just to have it under your name? or just to have it, or does it mean something to you that's gonna accelerate you in certain areas? So do your research, answer those hardcore questions when you're gonna decide to get an education and go back to school. Um, and, and just by you, 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 like we said in Elevate, create your own business plan. You know, that is part of your business plan. Not just say, I want my master's, but why? Why do you want to get your master's? Why do you want to get your undergrad? What is it going to do? How is it going to take you to a different place? How is it going to grow you? How is it going to stretch you? And the third thing I say advice is after you make your decision, you know you're committed, start talking to that support network. Support network is so important, even at the under, undergraduate level. I tell students when I speak to them, you need a support network. You cannot do it by yourself because there are going to be days where things are going to be tough for you and you cannot quit on yourself because you're quitting on yourself. You're not quitting on, the, on, the, on your parents or your partner or your, you're quitting on what you can become. I always tell people life is about growing and developing. That's what life is about, growing and developing and moving to that next level, the next stage in your life. So get 
a network behind you that's going to support you, friends, family, people that are going to make you accountable. That's what I did for my doctor. I had people calling me like after a bad situation and, and like I was like oh my god I was in tears I, I didn't pass that paper I did not source it correctly because the research chairs are very tough and when it's going into the doctorate school they will look at my paper they would critique it and I mean it was red all over and you could feel like oh my god I, I don't write well oh my god but I had friends that would call me and be like don't worry you got this girl get back on your feet and get back in there, correct that paper, maybe take a little bit of a break. It's okay, but don't take a long break. <laughs> they were make sure, don't take a long break. And they would check on me. So I believe in network, family support, you know, really as you're going through your journey of education and growth. And you have to know yourself, accountability partner. So I can tell you that for my undergraduate, Vanessa Green, became my partner in crime. We will meet at the parking lot at 4.30 in the afternoon. We will walk together to our classes. We will walk back every single day, Monday through Thursday. We never missed a class. We were pregnant at the same time. And, you know, like I was accountable to meeting her at the parking lot, but then from there on, every night was easier. And then Carrie, for my master's degree, we used to work um, in the same city and we will meet outside my home. We will carpool every mo Monday morning for that master's class. Same thing. The only time I missed a class was because there was a bomb threat and I couldn't get out of the building, but that was it. But I, I completely understand yes. and, and you are my accountability partner for <laughs> Elevate, right? So I know myself, I know I want to achieve things and I want to get through things, but I also know that if I have somebody there that it's going to be next to me, kind of making sure that I, you know, it's my responsibility, but I'm, I become more accountable yes. when I have that partner in crime. So whatever it takes to make sure that you're getting to where you want to get. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is getting us to the end of our session today. And I would like to just open it up for any final words, Joanna, that you may have. No, I think for me, it's, it's like I said in the beginning, this is a very humbling time for me to connect with all of you. I am definitely looking forward to Elevate Year 3. There's always work to be done. There's always impact and influence that, that, that the work that we do will impact the next generation, the people that need it the most. Um, and, and for me, you know, I want to make sure that I give hope to other people who are going to be seeing this video that, you know, being a Latina, you can get your doctorate. Being a Latina from a low income community and from, you know, not privileged, not having all the resources, you can still break barriers. And it doesn't matter how old you are, because I tell people that it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still get things done, you can still achieve, you can still go back to school, you can still get your degree, it doesn't matter. So I, I hope this video gives hope to people, um, knowing that, you know what, we're all in different stages in our education, our learning and development but we have to put effort in it to continue walking it and continue growing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you everyone for joining us. And, yeah. you know, we will start the next season, season three of our podcast in September.